Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dirt Road Therapy Shop Time. I'm at my friend's shop, Hardline 4x4 in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Bill is the owner here. He's working on some other stuff at the moment while I get this axle all cleaned up and ready to re-gear. This is a Dana 44 out of a JK. It's a non-Rubicon axle, so we're gonna throw a torque locker in this. 488 gears, torque roll molly axle shafts, will be at five on five for the lug pattern. So that gives us some great wheel options. And we're gonna get this thing dialed in and the gears all set up and good to go here at Bill's shop. He's done this a time or two. So we're gonna rely on his expertise and get you guys some pointers for if you're doing this at home in your own shop. Let's get to it. So we're located here in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Uh, we specialize lift kits, suspension work, alignments, wheels, tires, bumpers, winches, 12 volt accessories and re-gearing work. Axle lockers, locking differentials. Uh, we have a 5,000 square foot facility here. Currently have two two post lifts and one alignment rack. We just picked up actually Hunter's brand new Hunter Hawkeye Elite alignment system. This is my 1987 YJ. If you guys follow Motorbuilt, you've seen the buggy that their shop is building, their four link suspension, their front half, their back half. We kind of want to take that and put our own spin on it with our full out LS powered shop buggy. Um, over here, we have my 1982 CJ8 Scrambler. We kind of have this as our rolling mock-up for the shop right now. We got the motor set where we want it. Uh, behind it, we have an NP, no, excuse me, SM465 four speed with that ever popular granny gear low. This is what I take out and wheel Roush AOAA. If you're in Pennsylvania, you're familiar with those two parks. Um, it may not look like a lot, but it's pretty capable for what it is. Uh, it does have a Terralo four to one transfer case, Ford high pinion 44. The rear is an XJ44, both ARB lockers, 513s, King coil over front, three link. And this also has a rock crawler long arm kit, which makes a huge difference in performance on and off road. Have a peek in here. We got the one of a kind PRP alligator skin fancy boy seats. Moving away from the shop wheeler build, we're gonna bypass the boat. This is another hobby in which you can sink tremendous amounts of money as I'm sure some of you are aware. Uh, one of our pride and joy pieces here at Hardline 4x4 is our latest greatest Hunter Hawkeye Elite alignment machine. Uh, we're utilizing an older rack but we've retrofitted our tower with the newest style camera heads and target readers. Uh, some shops might turn you away if you ask to have an alignment done on a lifted or four-wheel drive vehicle. We kind of specialize in that. So contact us, we'll get you dialed in with alignment. Over here, and the reason that John is here, and one of the services we offer is re-gearing. We do locking differentials and re-gearing service. John brought in some Revolution gear and axle 48 gears to put in his JK non-Rubicon rear. So we're gonna show you how we do it here at Hardline 4x4. We just got an open carrier here and we've still got the old bearings on it. I didn't show the whole teardown of this axle. Basically, we've stripped this axle down, uh, got all the brackets off of it, cleaned it all out, pulled the stock shaft and everything, uh, got rid of all that stuff, but we're keeping the carrier and we're using a little bit of a specialty tool here to pull these bearings off. You can use a shop press. I've done that in the past, but if you can get a hold of one of these, What's this tool called exactly, Bill? That is a clamshell bearing puller. Clamshell bearing puller. If you can get a hold of one of these, it'll make your life a whole lot easier as you're about to see. So by using this race, it keeps the bearing from exploding. Uh, coming ah, yes. Yeah, so you wanna use the old race on there because if you don't, you're pulling just on the cage, which is not a strong point. And not that it wouldn't necessarily come off, but it could very well come apart and then that makes your life much more difficult than it should be. It's certainly better if you want to try and use this and retain it as a setup bearing. Yes. Just, I'd say that it won't come apart, it just minimizes the chances of it coming apart. Now 
All right, we're just gonna duplicate the process on the other side and uh, then we'll go over to the shop press and press on the new bearings. So it's not lunchtime yet. But... No, and we're not making a delicious shop casserole rich in nutrients and flavor. Uh, what we're actually gonna do here is heat up the ring gear. Uh, the trick with these is they're a really tight fit onto the carrier itself. Uh, you don't wanna try and hammer these into place. You really wanna take the time and heat these, but you don't wanna overheat these. Uh, typically between about 225, 250, put in for about 10 to 15 minutes. Let it get the temperature slowly. You don't have to wrap it, but it really does give the allure of a delicious shop casserole once in foil. Right into the shop oven. Thought you were gonna use the microwave for a second there. Oh, <laughs> not today. That would be a fail. So we're getting started on the pinion set up here while our casserole is cooking. And uh, I just wanted to explain real quick, we're using setup bearings. These are some that Bill has in a collection of different setup bearings for different axles that he does. Setup bearing is basically just ground out on the inside because as you probably know, a bearing is typically a press fit. So these are designed that we can just, uh, or modified rather, so that we can just slide them on here with a little interference to be able to get our shims set up. And when we do this too, we're leaving the crush sleeve out. So we're just gonna put enough torque on this to where there's resistance and we can be sure to get a good pattern between the pinion and ring gear. Ding! So we got, does it burn the hands? It does not. It feels warm. It's pretty good. Let's, uh, just for fun, We'll grab the temp gun and see what it's actually at. Mm, 125. We'll see if this is enough. Not 120 clear. doesn't seem like quite where we were going for. Not even close. I don't know if you noticed, but we had the oven set for 225-ish degrees. Oh. You know what? Sometimes less is more. That dropped right on there. It is beautiful. All right, well, let's get right to this then. I usually start with the first one, just to mark it as my starting point. Uh, these are set to 135 foot-pounds. Uh, I initially set at 135, but I normally like to torque these in sequence. Uh, I'm going to start this probably right around 60, just to get things snugged up a little bit. And we'll go back through and redo them all the way down to the 135 foot-pounds. All right, we're going to go back through and set these all at 135. I'm going to mark them all individual so I don't mess up on the sequence. That's a lot of torque. That's a lot of torque. It's concerning. Didn't break. It did not break.
One of the goodies going into this axle, a Yukon 1350 yoke. So this might vary based on what gear set you're using from what brand, but we couldn't find a used stover nut or a non-stover nut, so we found this TJ sector shaft nut that fit our Revolution gear pinion perfectly. So on a pinion setup like this, we're set up bearings, there's no crush sleeve, pinion preload is really not critical yet. We're just trying to get this to where there's some uh, resistance, no play, so that our measurements, our, our readings when we do the, the gear paint and everything is gonna be accurate. I always like to add a little bit of oil just to make sure we're not rolling on a dry bearing. Ready? Ooh, almost. So those are the factory shims, whatever came out of the axle. Yeah, we're gonna see kind of where things land with just these in place. Uh, we have the case spread approximately 15 thousandths. So this is gonna be our starting point. Uh, before we do final assembly, we're gonna probably add two to four thousands on each side with a case spreader open and then release tension to avoid pinion deflection uh, against the ring gear and the carrier. Okay. So for now, we're gonna see where this lays, run a quick pattern check. Backlash, I mean, the caps aren't on yet, but we're getting to a close spot. This might be about 15 to 20 thousandths or more. So we'll check that soon. I believe spec on these is 80. We're just gonna snug these up for now, just to check pattern and backlash. When you're grabbing uh, a measurement, you really want to be perpendicular to this tooth. Yeah. So that's the drive side of the tooth. Yes. You know, versus if this is a high pinion reverse, we'd yep. be kind of going from this side down. But for this, we want to hit it this way. Standard cut. Sometimes you can only work with the best you have. Mm -hmm. um, this is pretty close. Yeah, you want to kind of angle it to really match that dead on perpendicular, but generally yeah, you just this want is to make sure you're getting a consistent push yeah. on that dial. Wheel. So, we might have got lucky and got that right in the spec. Looks like we're under 10 for sure. Well, six is a spec, six. and yep. we're just about resting on six. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, this is definitely perfect around a pattern to see where our pinion depth is going to land. Okay. So we could dial that in ever so slightly better, but for getting our pattern, yeah, um, that's actually, exactly if, where we want to be. If we were to case spread this again, um, you know, open this up more, if this is a final assembly, we could drop in like a 2000 shim and that would change that backlash roughly one point, uh, maybe five thousandths just to get a little more. Okay. And it gets this more snug into the carrier. So again, less pinion deflection against the ring gear. This marking compound, I kind of thinned this down a little bit with gear oil. Use it to your own consistency. If you've done this a few times, you kind of know it works. If it's your first time, run it out of the box. You'll usually get a good pattern. Uh, I'm going to show you here in a second how I get a good pattern. You want to kind of load the gear up so as to get a better reading on the pattern marks. And I'll show you that here in a second. Yeah, so by load the gear up, you just mean put some tension on it like as if it was turning tires. Yeah, some if you read some forms, they'll say put the shafts in, put brakes on it, like put slight drag. It's it's so much, and the method I use has been very consistent, so I'm happy to share that here in a second. Checking pattern. This is the way we do it here at Hardline 4x4. Drill. It's nice to get one of these chucks that go into a drill, and I'll show you why that's important. Being half inch, it's going to fit most of your standard size sockets, so it's going to fit your pinion nut which in our case is 33 millimeter. So welding glove, kind of fold it up the best you can. You could use a lot of stuff, but this seems to work pretty good. I usually check direction. We're going up and you just want to kind of wedge this in the best you can kind of get it by hand. Put some pressure on it this way. Switch direction. I'm going to lower this down to the bottom. Again, put a good amount of pressure on this as much as you possibly can. Press against it as you start turning. Obviously, you don't want it to grab and pull this in there. All right, now I can check our pattern. Learning how to read this, I think, is the real key to getting good at setting up gears. So for a first go, I would say this is pretty much a perfect pattern. It's center, top to bottom, on the drive and the coast side. It's got good contact. Um, 
I almost wish the pinion depth was off a bit so I could show you this really cool technique of actually reading if it's going to go deeper or shallower. Um, and it's really simple. Um, I could show you kind of on paper how this works, but it'll actually make like a triangle in this. It would actually hook down and dip and kind of make this triangular shape in the pattern, which if it's that way, that means this pinion needs to get closer to the ring gear. So that means you would add a shim stack to bring it closer. Now, the opposite is true. If the triangle was going this way, pointing away, you have to go shallower. So you actually pull a shim off the pinion and drop the pinion away from the ring gear. So, but for this one, it's on the money. We're gonna play with backlash a little more and get it set that way. And this is pretty much good to go in the first stab. My understanding is it's impossible to put too much preload on the carrier bearing. Yes, 100%. So there's, there's basically no such thing as too much preload on carrier bearings. Uh, you can drive shims in there, that's always good. But the case spreader is going to allow us to get more shims. We can add the same amount of shim on either side. Yep. And it's never going to affect back, backlash because we're not shifting Correct. anything either yep, way. That's exactly right. And just to clarify, backlash is the amount of play between the ring gear tooth and the pinion tooth. Yep. Nice and easy. The trick is to use a brass hammer so we don't damage this beautiful forged yoke. For the most part, it's slip fit, but with the finish on the pinion itself and the finish on this is black oxide coating. It makes it just enough when you do this. Yeah. Neat. This is, yeah, that's gonna go that's with this. That's a good one, right? This is gonna go back on the sector shaft of my TJ steering box, so we'll put that here for safekeeping. Just borrowed slightly. Borrowed. All right, setup bearings. Set up bearings. Back Ooh, it's like box. a magic trick. Like that thumb trick where you, <laughs> but much different. So we want to make sure our shim stack is still fully in place there. We had three shims, I believe. Not stuck to this. Definitely not stuck to the back of that. We can see yeah. writing on the back of the bearing. I am going to pull these and not drop these because we're doing final assembly. We yeah, have three. Three, yep. Yeah. We're just going to double check. Nothing's changed, but we're going to make sure nothing's changed. 44. 42, and these slight difference in readings could just be a piece of grit. Uh, I'm gonna clean these up before we reinstall them on here. Just for good measure. Don't wanna press onto a dry surface. You can, but it just makes life a little bit easier. Look at that, Dana 44. Yeah, always good to have things labeled. Yes. Get ready to put the pinion back in the carrier. And one thing we have not really addressed is this. This is the crush sleeve or crush washer. What this does, it rides here in between the two bearings and it is designed to crush and apply pinion preload on these bearings to get turning torque where it needs to be. Now the design of these it takes an incredible amount of torque to get these to crush down I'd say between four to six hundred foot pounds so I will show you some of the tools I've made for shop use that is going to get you there uh, at home. Pipes, breaker bars, swearing um, and just stick with it uh, and I'll show you too how little of an incremental move advances and deforms this to a point where it would become unusable. So things to keep in mind, but yeah, that's kind of the purpose of this is to do pinion preload against the bearings in the case races. As we are ready to do the final assembly of the pinion uh, with the yoke, some things we want to note, the seal. This must be done at this step. Make sure your pinion is set up, your pinion depth is good because chances of getting the seal back out are slim but doable but not really what you want to do. Pinion, excuse me, pinion bearing. We haven't lubed this yet, but we will. Thrust washer, pinion would protrude up through there. Seal gets installed. So we're going to do this part first. 
We're gonna come back and actually put the pinion through and I'll show you how I set the bearing in with a little tool I've made. Do not forget the crush sleeve. We're gonna put this in and up through. And we haven't done the seal yet, but there's a reason for that. What we wanna address here is if we were to try and install this, you'll notice that this cannot get pressed on. It's a very tight fit. And if we were to try and put the pinion yoke on here and line this up with the splines, if you look in here, by the time you put the washer and the nut, there's not enough threads to grab this to pull the yoke down and actually drive this pinion bearing down where it needs to sit. Very simple shop tool, make it have a piece of pipe or whatever you have laying around the shop. So we're gonna put the pinion up through and what this little tool is gonna do is going to allow this to draw up enough so it presses the pinion bearing down so we can get enough threads to pull the rest of the pinion yoke down and draw this all the way up and then start to do our turning torque and get our uh, crush leaf crushed the way it should be. So I'll run this down with an air gun, get it set, back it off, and then put the yoke on. But before we do that, pinion seal. Pinion is going in with the new bearings and the crush sleeve on there, or crush washer. Just to verify, it is on there. <laughs> bearings are lubed. Don't want to forget that at this point, because if you do not have it on there, you will over torque your bearings. Yes. We need one more piece, which is the thrust washer. Thrust washer. Thrust washer check. Thank you. Specialty tool. Specialty. Emphasis on special. Very special. Oh, it's special. All right. Cool. So Trusty there's no Milwaukee. chance we're going to be crushing our crush sleeve at this point. Not a chance whatsoever. This should be enough to get the yoke started on here. We're gonna back this off. Plenty. And the pinion now is locked on because that upper bearing is pressed onto the pinion itself. All right, we're gonna move gonna... on to the pinion seal. All right, thank you, sir. All right, we'll get this started and tap it down. Observe the baby hammer. It's the butt of all jokes until people need to use it. And then they go, wow, this is really handy. Kind of a crucial tool when doing a crush sleeve. You really need something you can grab this accurately uh, and not have it move because the amount of force you need to generate to get this to start crushing, I think I mentioned earlier, it's between four and 600 foot pounds. Um, it's quite a bit. So having one of these tools, you can purchase these pretty much anywhere. The auto parts, off-road parts, gears are sold. They're about 40 to 50 bucks. Definitely recommend one for your first setup or any setup. We're going to use these tools that I've crafted out of pieces of stuff laying around the shop. Nothing fancy, but it does the job. You don't want to over tighten this. Right now, there's absolutely no preload. You can kind of grab the yoke and see. There's a good amount of movement. Yep, I can hear it too, and you're not going to be able to yeah. hear it on, on the so, camera audio probably, but. We're going to give this probably, I'd say at least another three or four good turns before we start to get the inch pound torque wrench out and start measuring things. And I can assure you doing this without this tool is a lot more fun than this.
even though I know it's probably not close, I still like to check because once you go too far, you're done. Yep, still has play it. Yep, you can feel it through the whole housing. You can kind of feel it too, like it starts to ramp up and get pretty tight, which it's starting to now. Yep, I can tell you're working harder there. So we're probably right at the point where it's starting to load up. I'm gonna check it again. Seems like definitely the play is gone. When you're doing turning torque for a pinion, you want to have a dial style torque wrench like this. This one measures in inch pounds. Uh, this is a snap on one, it's really nice, good quality. The problem with this one is it goes from zero to 600 inch pounds. That's pretty granular. We need a lot tighter resolution because what we're dealing with is 20 to 30 inch pounds. So to try and see that mark, while yes, it is visible. It's a little bit easier to set up when you have something like the one I use. This is in Newton meters, zero to 12. Uh, to give you an idea, one Newton meter is roughly 8.8 .8 inch pounds. So I've got everything written out on my setup chart. If I hit two Newton meters, it's 17.7 .7 inch pounds. If I hit three, it's 26.5. And there is marks in between each major mark. So I can kind of split the difference and get close. This is like my cheat sheet I use in the shop. Um, we're looking at again, JK rear, follow this over, 20 to 30 inch pounds. And as I showed you, we're using a Newton meter torque wrench. So two is 17.7 and three Newton meters is 26.5. So we're gonna try and hit somewhere around two and a half to three and a half Newton meters roughly. When you start off with this, initially it's gonna be at zero. Your breakaway torque, you can kind of see it ramps up. You don't wanna go by that, you wanna go by your full-time turning torque. It might be kind of hard to see on camera, but we're kind of hitting just a smidge over two, neat, two Newton meters, which roughly puts us at 18, 19 inch pounds. We're gonna try and bump this up a little bit and see how much of this change here makes a big difference here. We're gonna do a teeny bit here, which is, I might've moved that bar down one inch and we'll see what that looks like in the readings. So we're about three, there's five tick marks per unit. So we're about 3.8 Newton meters, which puts us roughly around 32 to 34 inch pounds. So slightly over, but nothing that's gonna dramatically change the outcome of how these bearings go down the road. So just that little bit. Yep. Brought us from what, two and a half to, almost not double, even two and a half. Almost yeah. double at that point. Yeah, I mean, we think we went from yeah, what was it, 17.7 to 32, and just that much movement on the handle. So yeah, just be careful when tightening these down. A little bit goes a long way. It's kind of cool to just give a, a feel for how tight that really is. And that will not stay that way. The bearing will break in. I like this as factory. No problem. I want to see the baby. Hammer. Just adding a little bit more marking compound to do our final pattern here with everything set up. Some of you may have noticed at this point that we have no cross shaft in our carrier. And that is because, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we we're running a torque locker. Uh, it was my fault for not having the torque locker handy for this install. So we're gonna need to pull the ring gear off which will mean we need to replace these bolts and put our torque locker in there, reinstall the ring gear. Not a huge deal, uh, but make sure you have all your parts when doing your build.